Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. Leftist liberals hate him. Atheists despise him. Evolutionists and socialists fear him. Certain other talk show hosts are jealous of him. The White House administration knows who he is. But this is why you listen to Carl Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. All right, Bradley Jensen, thank you for that wonderful introduction. And thank you, folks, for hanging on. God bless you. Welcome back, America. We're going to go straight to the phone lines because we've got Mike Shoesmith out of Toronto, Canada. Mike, welcome to the show. I understand you have some amazing stories out of the world of science for us. You've always got uh, amazing insight there. Talk to us. Well, you're doing such a terrific job, you and your other correspondents, tackling the the tough uh, political issues of the day. As you know, I am an astute political observer, so it was it was difficult for me to decide what to talk about because, of course, I am in the know on, on much of what's happening in the world. But uh, I'm listening to the rest of your your correspondents, and you guys are doing such a good job with it. I think I need to bring the audience uh, back over to the scientific side of things here because, as the world is 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 on fire. Uh, so, too, is the scientific world. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, because, uh, well, we're going to play a little game here with the news. And, and, and it's uh, essentially, we, we'll take two different stories uh, reported from two totally different sources and uh, put them together and make one giant, uh, enormous story out of it. Okay. And let's, pr- let's do a little practice here, okay? So on November 6th, we had uh, the good folks of Colorado... Uh, voting in favor of legalizing marijuana, right? Right, remember that. Yes, and then this morning we have <laughs> we have a story out of we have a story out of Yahoo News uh, that uh, UFOs are being reported over Denver now. Saw I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Now, may, may perhaps some of your audience have made the connection already. So on November 6th, we have the legalization of pot. Right. No, a, I, I, a, a brain cell killing substance. Right. And then just a few days later, everybody's seeing UFOs. Yeah. And even the even the news crews are are stumped. You know that's that's the word that was used. That right. the the uh, the experts are stumped. They can't. You know, normally they can figure out whether it was just somebody uh, you know doing a little Photoshop or something. But this one here, the news crews they actually got footage of it, and they don't know what it is. So I'm kind of thinking. <laughs> There may be a we may be able to conflate the two uh, news stories into one here. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, but that's how that game is played. But let's go on to a more serious matter here, because it does deal heavily with with our children and and the way we view uh, the world around us. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, in fact, I think it was the it may have been the uh, Sunday. It wasn't the it wasn't the Friday prior to the election. It was the, the Friday previous to that. And we 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 uh, we exposed the story of of the of the discovery of the finally nailing down the half life of DNA. Right. I think that was last Friday. But anyway, uh, no, but anyway. this was before the election. Oh, okay. All right. Well, go ahead. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, but so so we we find, we reported on a story that uh, the the half life of DNA has now been nailed down scientifically to 521 years. And the way, I know you know this, but just for the benefit of the audience, the way Half-Life works is, say you have a thousand units of something. Uh, the half-life of that, over, over 521 years, there would be 500 left. Right, 500 units. Right, mm-hmm. and then 521 years after that, there would be 250 units. Right. Et cetera, and on down the line, every 521 years, half of what remains is right. gone. That's right. So the half-life of DNA has been, has, been, has been nailed down now to 521 years. Which means? Which, which means that uh, deep time evolution, and evolution is just a word, it just means change over time. Right. But deep time, billions of years evolution is impossible. Is impossible. It's impossible, yeah. So anyway, we put, that, we put the audio to that show up on the, up on the uh, YouTube channel, P.P. Simmons uh, on YouTube, and blasted it all over the place. And of course, the comment sections they just lit up like uh, right. like uh, Dante's Inferno. Right. And uh, somebody got in there and said, "Well, look, all right, why is it that you, we don't find DNA in dinosaurs then?" Yeah. <laughs> right. And so obviously, you know, the answer that uh, the first of all, 
they have discovered it. Yes, they have. There, there. I mean, there is. There's so much fraud in the in the in the uh, in the welfare scientist community that that uh, promotes the, uh, the theory of evolution, deep time evolution. That you can't trust any of them. I mean, the only way you could trust them is if every time they spoke, you had them hooked up to a, a lie detector. Right. Uh, but uh, it's amazing now that I had this discussion with this person. He was very polite, and we, we, we tend not to shy away from, from polite controversy. He, and I said, well, look, you know, dinosaurs were, were killed off in the flood, and the flood lasted a year. So the, the 521-year uh, half-life for DNA is under, is under perfect uh, uh, circumstances, uh, where, where, the, where the environment is pristine. That's the best possible scenario. Right. But under under extreme water pressure, it's less and than that. With the with the rugged with the rugged treatment of whatever was being uh, uh, you know underneath all these millions of tons of water, the uh, the half life of DNA would be dramatically affected. Yeah. So you wouldn't find rampant ca- rampant examples of DNA on dinosaurs. However, th- uh, the following week after I had that discussion. Scientists came out and said, look, we have discovered DNA on dinosaurs. On dinosaurs. Yeah, I saw that article. <laughs> and that was, that was revealed in the journal Bone, by the way. Yeah. So this is a scientific journal. The very week after we brought this uh, to the attention of the world, has now, dis- has now disclosed DNA has been found on dinosaurs. Right. So it really is time to jettison the deep time evolution myth the uh, the atheist creation myth of evolution, right? And embrace the truth, embrace real science here. Don't be afraid to say, look, uh, the best possible uh, explanation for why we're here is the God did it mechanism. Yeah, the best possible scientific explanation right. is is there had to be an intelligent designer. And there of... is no controversy here. Science and the Bible are completely harmonious. There is no controversy here. You can be a scientist and still believe that God loves you. And however, I'm his favorite. Thank you, guys. Yes, you are. (laughs) We'll see you guys next week. That's a great word, Mike, and a great word on which to end. God bless you, Mike Shoesmith. Thank you very much, guys. We'll talk to you next week. All right, man. Appreciate the job you're doing with the P.P. Simmons Ministries as well. Mike Shoesmith, he is a syndicated blogger, the executive director of the world-famous and mega-viral P.P. Simmons YouTube Ministries. He's also a published author of several books. You can read all about him at carlgallops.com and the P.P. Simmons Ministry. If you're not uh, uh, subbed up and linked up and liked up on the P.P. Simmons Facebook page, you really need to check that out. I mean, it is a live blogging feed that continuously round the clock goes. You need to be a part of it. We'll be right back.